So I'm a currently dealing with like a mental illness episode. I just want to describe it. Describe my experiences. Um, it's been hitting on and off for a few days. Like the symptoms, the signs. <laughs> but uh, one of the major causes is that I'm in a liberal state in New Mexico and I can't get help for shit to save my life. Which makes no sense because the government knows I'm schizoaffective and so do the people. Facebook knows, LinkedIn knows, Instagram knows, YouTube knows, and all my family in real life know. And none of them are doing shit to fucking get me help, like get me on medication or a caregiver or any of that. So I'm being forced to function through my mental illness, in my mental illness, and it sucks. I have some Christians that are helping me, but their help isn't like 100%. <laughs> but it really does help. Like they gave me a place to stay. They let me stay at their house, which is like five acres or something, and nobody smokes weed on the property. So there's no involuntary exposure. And that has really been a blessing. That's really been decreasing my mental illness, but it's still there. <clears throat> and, um,. So like I got voices screaming in my head, like things about socks. You know, you fucking socks, we play with fucking socks like that. That voice was screaming loudly in my head just now. And mild hallucinations, you know, seeing little silver worms <laughs> that aren't really there. Um mm, wanting to stay in the dream world, not wanting to get out of bed. You know, things like that. A headache, but not a headache. Like this weird feeling in my head. Reality slipping away into, you know, things like that. Me slipping into my mind, away from reality. Like reality is the edge of the water. And I'm falling and sinking deeper into the water, further and further away from the surface. Uh, and I don't get why I don't have help, but the uh, the Christians, uh, thank God for them, because they're the only ones helping me, not government, not family, not, you know, all those fake friends who fucking lied to me, claiming they cared about me over the years, who aren't here, aren't in my life, because they were lying and didn't care about me and just wanted to use me. Yeah. Another aspect of my illness, I think, is an olfactory hallucination. Where my uh, puppet that I'm doing for this art class, right? It smells like weed. <laughs> and I know what it's from. I got this boxer's tape at Walmart in Albuquerque. And for some reason that smells really strong like weed. And I'm like, they don't make boxer's tape out of weed. But I pulled that stuff off the statue and the smell still lingers. And it's the rubber adhesive is what I think, which is really shitty and weak adhesive. But that's like setting me off too. And it just makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. Why the fuck would fucking boxers tape smell like weed? And it set me off. I don't, I don't get it. And it's, but uh, the Christians were at least nice enough to give me an RV that doesn't run. But I'm thinking I can get it to run. <clears throat> It'll be a struggle. Like a normal person without a brain injury or mental illness could get that RV running really fast. But because it's me with my conditions, it'll, it'll be a few years. But once I do get it running... I have the option to drive anywhere I want, basically, if, if I can drive. I, because it's shitty America and nobody in real life is going to actually help me and, you know, be a real friend and drive with me and stuff. 
so I will have to drive myself somewhere. And I'm stuck between two major fine points on where I'm going to go. One would be staying in the state of New Mexico, which would be self-destructive because I can't get help here. I don't know why I don't have health coverage. The only explanation is government incompetence. But uh, some part of me wants to uh, stay in the land that my family has been for 400 years, even though my dad, being the shitbag that he is, failed to pass the torch on to me for my ancestors and their traditions. I can still reignite that torch. I'm thinking right now the biggest act of defiance and rebellion would be returning to tradition, learning the Castilian Spanish that my grandfather spoke, but my dad never taught me. And, uh, you know, reconnecting, reestablishing the connection between blood and soil, basically. Where my Spanish conquistador lineage has been since 1608, but the line broke with a weak man like my father. <sighs> but I can pick up pieces and put them back together. Pass that stuff on to my son. It's another goal. Get, get a family. Start a family. Build a house. <clears throat> Even if I never get the help I need. And that would be staying in the state. Now, leaving the state, I can go to uh, West Coast or East Coast. I'm still undecided. I still get text messages from North Carolina saying that uh, if I need to make an appointment with a mental health clinic, you know, that I can. Apparently, I still can get coverage easier in a red state like North Carolina than a shitty blue state like New Mexico. <laughs> How crazy is that? After all that political bullshitting about how Republicans don't care about people unless they're in the womb. <laughs> it's like, liberals ain't doing fuck all to fucking help me in a liberal state, in my home state at that. So, you know, tisk tisk. And the other option is I go back to Seattle. I can go to the West Coast. I'm considered that. But... It made me question things about, well, where is home for me? I realize now that throughout my life, I've never really had a sense of permanence or attachment. Humans are just so awful, they're always making it hard to stay in one place. They just got to be assholes, right? Especially Americans, apparently. Like, why would they make things easier and decrease my suffering by getting me help and support and care instead of making things harder on purpose thus forcing me to function in my mentally ill states it's fucking horrible dude people are fucking awful <sighs> so then i asked the question of where is home me i've never known a home since i was a kid that's what traumatic childhoods do they they make home a horrible place that's why i ran away that's why kids run away all the time i would imagine that's why i did it's better out there on the street than it is at home because things are that bad at home that's my uh, experience Hmm. I don't think I'll ever know those things. Those will always be a fantasy that I'll never get to make a reality. And family and home, you know. But as far back as I could remember, my darkness, my imagination, my dream world, and things in it, those have always been with me. And those are with me no matter where I am or what I'm going through. My imaginary friends and companions. My imagination is like my safety blanket that protects me from the cold and cruel reality of humans.
I still don't understand why I'm not on medication and don't have a caregiver when I'm supposed to. But I mean, even the government caregivers are shitty. Like if I had a real caregiver, if anyone truly, genuinely cared about me, I wouldn't be going through this. <laughs> and that includes family, so. <clears throat> Anyhow, I'm getting that strange feeling in my head and have trouble finding the words to express what I'm trying to express. Amen. Yeah.